In this video, we're going to show you how we made the world's fastest super smelter in Minecraft. For a simple two row module like we'll be making today, you'll need these materials. You can add more modules like us if you have some big projects to smelt for. And we put a link in the description if you want to download it and check it out. My daughter wanted to help out with the tutorial, so let's get started. Here we go, guys. Two blocks like this, then a piston here. Now place lots of furnaces, like this. Now take out the last one and place a piston like this. Now seven furnaces up. Now furnaces over like this. Now fill in this square. Place a block here. Take out a furnace. Now piston like this. Take out two furnaces and put a block up there. Another piston like this. Take that out. Gotta put one furnace back, not two. Now let's go down here. Now just make some stairs so you can go down in a hole. <laughs> God, how's he gonna <coughs> place a server pointing like this? Now get out of your hole, place a block and another block and one redstone right under the server. Now pack that hole. Now back up to the top, place this block like a little store to stand on. Crouch down and place a server like this. We don't need this. You do need one behind this. Place a piece of redstone like this. Now one over here. Put a zero here. So the butt is pointed up. Now we need two redstone dust to connect these two. Almost done guys. Back down here. Place the observer with a butt pointing back. Redstone dust. Add another block. And another butt. I mean, it's server. This is very important, guys. We need a block right here. We're going to add a button, and this is going to be the stopping mechanism for our machine. Take out a furnace in the corner just over that piston. And we can add some output chests. an input for whatever you're smelting, and also an input for the fuel. Now we're gonna take these out in a moment because we're gonna build another row next to it to make it a double module. But these are the positions those chests should be in based on how long it takes an item to smelt. Now to add a second row, we're going to duplicate what we did the first time except there are a few observers that you don't need in the second row and we'll show you which ones those are. Now it's really important in order to get this to start properly you need three corners that do not have furnaces and the bottom left corner is the only corner that will have both furnaces in place and that is on the ignition side there's two observers that feed back to each other to start the whole process. Now here's what this would look like if you did make an exact copy, but you don't need that observer on the second row. And the same with this corner. It doesn't have an observer, but it should have redstone over that piston. Do this corner down here just like this. There's one observer and redstone beneath to connect to those two pistons. We found that we needed a lever instead of a button as the 
stopping mechanism. Now we can finish off our double input chest with two hoppers going down straight into the furnaces, one on each row. And then on the side, we'll connect two hoppers facing into those furnaces on the side. The fuel hoppers need to be arranged a little bit differently just because they need to go into the side of the furnace. So for a double row module like this, Half of the chest will go to the left and the other half will go to the right and then they'll go straight down into the side of the furnaces. So let's look at the different parts of this module. The green arrows are showing you which direction this module is rotating. Then we have the observers marked in orange and this is showing that this observer is reading this furnace. So when this moves into position, this observer will fire this piston. And um, the same goes for each of these corners. And that's what helps make this design move the furnaces efficiently. The first thing to note is that you want this machine to be running before you put anything into the input chest or any of the fuel in the fuel chest. That will allow it to distribute evenly without locking a hopper. Um, and the ability to not have to lock hoppers is why we can stack these row by row by row and not get into trouble with um, pistons or observers not working because of the extra redstone. So to turn this on, over here, this observer that we placed is what starts the whole process of moving the pistons and furnaces. So this observer is reading this block here. So when you remove this block, it will fire this observer and this observer will then fire this piston. Now what's important is in order to start this properly, this corner has to have a furnace in it in order for the um, cycle to start. So you have to make sure that this furnace is in place in this corner and this corner should not have a furnace same as this one and this one so the only corner that has a furnace is this one when you start the green arrows signify which way the furnaces are moving and that is important when we're placing um, our input and our fuel and our output because we want to count how many furnace positions are there between the input and the output chest. And many of you may know that any item, no matter what it is, takes 10 seconds to smelt in a regular furnace. 10 seconds is a little bit more than 10 ticks. We have that it's about 17 ticks um, and every tick is a movement um, from one position to another of these furnaces. So we have it set up that in between the input and the output is about 17 positions. So we'll count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So in theory, once this furnace gets an item, it should be done smelting by the time it gets to drop into the output chest. So you could make it um, 18, but what we're also trying to do in order to maximize efficiency is reduce the number of positions on the exit side of the output. So each of these blue dots represent non-smelting time. So you can play with the shape and arrangement of your uh, module to reduce the non-smelting time as much as possible and make the cycle match the smelting time for one item.